Hello and welcome. In this lesson, we are going to be learning River Flows in You by Yoruma. So you heard it at the beginning there. It's so graceful, it's so beautiful, and it feels kind of like a journey as you go through the song. So we're gonna walk you through this step by step. You're gonna be able to knock the socks off of your friends and family when you sit down and play this piece. I can't wait to dive in. So this song has three sharps to look out for. So before you even dive in, it might be a great idea to practice your A major and your F sharp minor scales so you can get really comfortable with the key signature. That said, let's figure out how to play that iconic theme. So what we'll do is we'll place our five finger way up high here on A and we're gonna rock back and forth between A and G sharp. And then we're gonna go back to A, and then we have E, and then A, and then D. And then we just get to hang out there. And then we're gonna play A and C sharp, and then we repeat that again. Sounds lovely, but it sounds even more lovely when we get our left hand involved. So the left hand part here plays an F sharp, a C sharp, and an F sharp. And that's based off the F sharp minor chord. And then we're gonna move to D, A, and then we're just gonna hang out there on that E. And so when you put it together, it sounds beautiful. It can take a little bit to get it coordinated, but just go really slow. And then you're gonna hang out there. And you can be dramatic here. You can play with time a little bit. So don't worry about being really rigid here, you can kind of be dramatic, and then once you're ready, we're gonna move back into that theme, and it's going to sound like this. But I'm gonna pause there, because we're gonna work through that little portion together. Okay, so what I just did there was almost identical, actually, to this beautiful little theme we learned at the beginning which sounds simple and beautiful, but then it, it's got a slightly different rhythm, which is why it sounds so impressive when you get into measure five. So I'm gonna walk you through that. And the beautiful thing here is once you get this rhythm, it shows up all through the song. So, so much of the work for this piece is showing up right here on the first page. So you're gonna spend some time and learn it, but once you do, it's gonna carry you through the rest of it. So our notes are basically the same. We've got our A and our G sharp and our A. But instead of playing at one and two and three and four and, we're going to use counting that goes one E and a two E and a, et cetera, to help us get through this. So it's gonna go one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So you can see how I'm kind of holding some of those notes there because they're tied over and that's what gives it this unique rhythm. Now, I counted that out loud for you, but if I'm perfectly honest, that's not how I learned to play it. I learned by listening to the song and then imitating the rhythm, which was way easier for me. So if counting is helpful, do that. Or if hearing the rhythm is helpful, do that. Now I'm gonna show you how that all comes together because when you play the left hand with the right hand here, it actually helps you to figure out where everything lines up. So our left hand part is always based off a chord and you can get away with, if you see F sharp minor, just playing F sharp, C sharp, F sharp. That's a root, fifth, root pattern. Sometimes that pattern changes a little bit and we get a weird note on top, like with this D, we've got D, A, which is the root, the fifth, and then we don't have a D, we have an E, which sounds beautiful. So you can follow those notes precisely if you want, or you can revert to a root, fifth, root pattern in the left hand, they're both gonna sound awesome. I'm just wanting to give you a way to simplify this if you need to. So when we put this together, watch this. Suddenly, it kind of makes sense because where we're holding a note in our right hand, our left hand is playing a note. So I'll do that one more time. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So spend some time there and get comfortable. And when you're ready, you can move on to the next little set of measures, which is is kind of like a cheerful little diversion from what we've been doing. It sounds really, really pretty, and we've got this uh, little, this little trill. They're so fun to play. It's like a teeny little note. You're gonna play B, and you're gonna quickly roll it to the C sharp, and it's gonna sound like this. So all together, it's going to sound like this. 
nice and slow. And here's where we have that grace note, which I called a trill earlier. And we're gonna move up. We've got E and then we've got D here. And then check this out. Two notes at the same time. Sounds so pretty. A and E in the right hand. And then the C sharp fits beautifully in the middle. And then we've got this G sharp and B. Now here's a great example of where I could have just played the root, fifth root pattern, but the notation shows the G sharp, B, and E. And so either is gonna sound great. Don't stress about that too much. Now here's the new section. And then we're gonna move down, and then we're traveling back up, and I like to reset my third finger on C sharp. We're moving up, and then stepping back down. And the left hand pattern's very much the same. It's just difficult to coordinate at first, so you can go really slow. So if we go from measure six with that fun little grace note, we're gonna sort of go. This part feels pretty steady rhythm-wise. See, I played my left hand different there, it's okay. I'm moving on. Together here, we're gonna go F sharp. Now we're sharing our space. Don't worry about that. Our hands are gonna get crowded at some points in the song, and that's okay. Sharing is caring. D, A, E, traveling up. Our left hands move down. And technically that was written as a G. See how, see this is, this is happening? So even to me, I'm kind of improvising my left hand a little bit because there's so much going in the right hand. There's so many things happening rhythmically. So please take an approach that feels good for you. Okay, so there's a lot happening. So I'm going to take the first eight bars and play them hand separately and then together for you. I'm gonna go really slow so you can see exactly what's happening. So our left hand's gonna go here. Down to D. Drama. Repeat the same thing again. Back to the D. And I am using my pedal to help sustain the notes. Now, let's look at the right hand. Nice and slow, take a breath. <sighs> Again, drama, take a moment. And then get ready. Now, let's do it hands together. measure nine, the great news is, is we've, we've done this already. There's just some extra little goodies, little bling on some of the notes. Call them grace notes. You can call them ornaments. You can call them bedazzled. Whatever you like. It sounds like this. Here's another one. So notice I tucked my hand. Let's just take a quick moment there because this is one of those small changes that can be a little tricky to navigate. So let's take a look. So two finger, we're gonna use that ornament and then I'm gonna tuck my thumb under, reaching up to this high C sharp with this A in the left and then here we are. Now we've got another, you can ignore this grace note if you want, or these grace notes, but it's gonna sound like this. And then we land here. And guess what, friends? Very familiar territory. Okay, so let's take a moment there. Just wanna talk you through this little section really, really quick. We'll get right to playing it so you can see what happens. But it's very, very similar to that little bit that we did over there in measure seven and eight earlier. There's just extra notes. So you wanna pay close attention to the music. Keep in mind, if you're a piano member, we've got a practice feature for you that will let you slow these sections down, loop them, plus you'll be able to download sheet music there. You can make little notes on your page if you want. So this section is going to sound like this. So 
we're gonna be doing this rocking pattern. Same idea, just some extra notes. So be prepared to go from A to low A. So stay relaxed here. Forefinger on the A lets me carry this down. Tuck. Skip to C sharp. Third finger comes over, and then I move to the B. Four fingers already ready here on the A. Repeats. Now, great news. This just goes on and on and on, but we get one more fun little extra bonus in the mix here with the addition of a 30 second note. So if you look at the music, it's like all these lines and it can seem overwhelming. Don't worry, we don't even have to count this. We just have to think super fast. <laughs> So I'll play you how it sounds. You're gonna love playing this. I really do. Um, it sounds like this. So it sounds so happy and cheerful. And once you get this under your fingers, it really does feel like your hands are flying. So what we're doing, we're just moving quickly from A, we're playing A again, and then we're moving to that B quickly. It's just some super fast notes. Get that five ready on that A after you come off of it, and then you rotate here. Dun, 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 dun. So just practice that over and over till it feels easy. Don't let this hand tense up because you'll get sore. Stay relaxed. And then you've got that section. It's business as usual. I'm gonna go from measure, end of measure 16, and I'm gonna carry you through to the end of this section. Here we go. Our third finger on G sharp, we're gonna move down to B, and then we've got another sort of crossover to G sharp, and then E. <sighs> we made it. That's the bulk of the song from here. It's a lot of repeats with little bits of extra bling added in again. So at this point, you can take a moment and breathe. This song is all about dynamics. If you listen to the original recording, there's so much drama. There's these pauses, there's this rubato, which means sort of like playing with time a little bit. You're sort of, there's these like pushes and pulls that feel natural, just like a river. So keep that in mind as you go. Add some dramatic flair to this. This next little bit, it's business as usual. You've played something very, very similar to this already, so I'm not gonna repeat it for you. But I am gonna jump in at measure 24, because we've got another sort of little change up. So this theme has, sort of feels like it has extra notes. Well, because it does. <laughs> And then we've got that grace note that makes another appearance. So pay attention for those. Here we've got the C sharp that moves quickly to the A. And another one here. A slightly busier left hand. Now here's a fun little moment. We're gonna be moving to a C sharp and an E, but we've got this grace note here. So you can add that in or you cannot. Again, business as usual. You've done all of this already. So I'm gonna play this for you, um, this next little section, nice and slow. And please keep in mind that my left hand has a mind of its own and it might improvise some of the notes. But this will give you a pretty darn close idea to exactly what you need to be doing through these sections.
Okay, so isn't that beautiful? It feels so freeing to play to. And I just, I need to tell you that I've had to practice this song a lot um, to even be able to play it for you here in this lesson. And I'm still not playing it perfectly. So please keep in mind this is a journey. It's okay to make mistakes and it's okay not to have it perfect. It's super important to enjoy the process and allow this song and the learning of it to enrich your musical life as opposed to getting stressed out about hitting all of the notes perfectly. So that's my little speech. Now we're going to go to the ending of the song, which huh, starts with some grace notes. So beginning on measure 38 here, we're rolling up to this high A with these beautiful little grace notes. We can slow down, we've got a steady beat and a slightly different left hand. All the way up to A. Don't stress about these squiggly lines, they just mean roll through the chord. We're just traveling back up. Here's another rolled chord. So we're going to play here. All the way up. And then we're going to be hitting an E and a B. And then we've got a G sharp. Familiar territory again. That's a fermata, that funny looking symbol. It just means hang out there for longer than you're supposed to. <laughs> Overstay your welcome slightly. And then the final notes, we've got A and F sharp. And then we've got C sharp and A. And then we've got C sharp and F sharp. And then we've got F sharp and A. And then we're gonna go here to an octave. And you can be very dramatic with your posture if you like. Make a face. And ta-da, <laughs> you've gotten through the song. Yay! It feels so good. So I will say that this is a challenging piece and I've had to spend a lot of time practicing it to even be ready to sit here and play and teach it to you. And keep that in mind as you're going through it. I'm still making mistakes. I'm still working through all of the notes to get them just right. And so enjoy the process. This isn't about getting everything perfect. This is about allowing the song to improve your relationship with music and improve your skills on the piano. So it's not gonna happen overnight. You gotta take your time with it, but make sure you're remembering to smile and that you're enjoying playing the piece. Okay, so finishing touches. Icing on the cake on this piece are going to be those dynamics, so don't be afraid to have these like swells of volume and play a little bit with that rubato. So you know you have a little bit faster here and a little bit slower here. Be the river. So I would love to ask you, how does this song make you feel? Sometimes I hear it and I'm like, oh, this is very somber. And other times I hear it, I'm like, oh, it's so happy and lovely. So talk to me a little bit. Tell me in the comments below what emotions the song brings up for you. If you had to pick a setting or an event to perform this piece at, what would it be? Would you be in the forest? Would you be at the river? Would you be at like an event or a train station playing a public piano? I would love to hear from you. Happy practicing. Comment below and I'll see you next time.